Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is Saturday, April 30th, 2011, and I'm Darko. This is part two of this news bulletin for today. My website is www.ggnonline.com. That's www.ggnonline.com. All right, so we have Obama seeks end to oil industry tax breaks. And it says, President Barris Satoru on Saturday kept pressure on Congress to end tax breaks for the oil and gas companies saying they were enjoying huge profits as he sought to limit political fallout from rising gasoline prices, and um, which doesn't make any sense, right, because it's kind of counterintuitive. I mean, if they were to do this on top of gas prices already being, what, uh, uh, well, it's $125 a barrel right now, so, I mean, average around my place is around, like I said in the last video, around 410 420 so I would imagine that this is going to just increase that price and make sure that we hit that $5 mark, which is maybe what they want. It says here, Obama bids farewell to space shuttle as Florida to lose thousands of jobs. President Barry Satoro is set to bid a personal farewell to America's manned space shuttle at Cape Canaveral today as Florida Space Coast prepares to say goodbye to thousands of NASA jobs in a state crucial to Obama's re-election. Then SETI halts search for alien life. The Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, or SETI, has called off its monitoring system for extraterrestrial communication due to budget cuts. So that's kind of a big deal for them guys. Russia Central Bank raises key interest rates. And then Japan's rating outlook lower to negative by S&P on quake rebuilding cost. And they could have, like I said, I've mentioned this in other videos, so I just got to put that out there that right off the bat, uh, they just took on trillions of dollars, just printed it out instead of letting their uh, currency keep appreciating and then letting that, uh, that reconstruction actually uh, uh, boost their currency but they didn't they just printed a bunch of money and freaked out and so you know and I, I just wonder if they did that voluntarily or they did, were coerced to, into doing it and in other words we're going to harp you again it says here Bernanke says high unemployment housing restraint uh, US economic recovery and he said high levels of joblessness and home foreclosures are restraining the US recovery but that doesn't make any sense because they said that this is a jobless recovery. So I'm just going to stop there because it makes no sense at all. Fed's spigot pumps up markets in April. Global markets closed out a week to remember on Friday as Federal Reserve Chairman Ben Bernanke or Helicopter Ben pledged to keep cheap money flowing through the economy. You like that? Cheap money flowing. Tax dollars. Money stolen from people that aren't even born yet. That's the cheap money that's flowing money that is stolen from people at gunpoint that aren't even born yet you just do you see the problem there <laughs> ireland slashes its growth forecast and says unemployment will rise okay and they didn't want to be with the eu or the euro and uh you better get used to it and that's what you're going to get. You're going to get high unemployment and inflation. Number of the week, then millions are set to lose unemployment benefits. 5.5 million Americans unemployed and not receiving benefits. It says the job market may be on the mend, but that's not much cons consolation in millions of Americans facing a frightening deadline at the end of their unemployed benefits. And it says as of mid-March, about 8.5 million people were receiving some kind of unemployment payments, down from 11.5 million a year earlier, according to the Labor Department. Go out and check that out. Links will be posted. Consumer paychecks edge up. It says consumer paychecks continue to inch up in March. That's because they're trying to adjust for inflation. But rising gas prices and food prices have individuals spending more on staples because of what? Inflation. It says here, higher incomes. Uh, and, of course, they're going to say weather, too, which... Yeah, the weather does play a role into it, um, but unfortunately, we're going through a cooling period, and uh, the global global warming alarmists aren't going to tell you that that we are going through a cooling period. So when your coffee goes up forty percent due to the frost that's hitting the crops, and oranges are expensive are more expensive, you know, because of colder temperatures or whatever. You know, you can blame that on global warming. Well, no, it's global cooling. The other thing, too, is you have to remember that there's a weather modification uh, being carried out globally on a global basis uh, almost every day. So, I mean, that's going to have an impact on droughts. That's going to cause droughts. I mean, because when you're creating rain in one location, you're taking precipitation from another location. Usually, I like to use a lake or a, um, some body of water to, to go off of right? But worst case scenario, they just steal the precipitation from somewhere else. And that's what China is doing right now. And they have a lot of problems uh, with droughts and that. Well, they're modifying the weather. 
and uh, they don't exact they don't have it exactly um, uh, down pat right now because they actually caused a big freak blizzard uh, I think it was a year ago and it says here higher incomes lead to surging home prices in China and they're contributing to the it says here household incomes that are rising are contributing to the surge in housing prices and uh, keep moving here because I have a lot of articles to cover in this video. Struggling families delay paying electric bills. And it says about 1.1 million Aussies were uh, late paying their utility bills in the past three months as soaring electricity prices put pressure on household budgets. And then here we go. This starts to get interesting. Americans increased spending in March as gasoline and grocery, grocery prices climbed. And, uh, it, you know, it kind of has a positive twist, doesn't it, that, that headline, Americans increase spending in March as gasoline and grocery prices climb. No, they paid more because they're necessities. They have to eat. They have to get to work so, you know, so they can eat. You know, you see how that works? And uh, that's the whole game, though, guys. That, I mean, that's, that's the whole game. I mean, most of you are aware of it, that money is used as a means to control people. Uh, you just make sure, uh, uh, you know, because these people... These people that the powers that be, they have all the money that, that they want, right? But it's not really money that they have. It's, it's, it's intrinsic value that they have. They have actual resources. They have um, uh, mines that are, they own that are owed to them, that they're making interest off, all these fraudulent loans that they issue. They make money off that. So they're fine. They just want to make sure that the slaves, that the plebs don't ever actually get enough dollar bills in their hand or gold or silver. That's why they, you know, basically got rid of gold and silver as a backing currency. That way they can they can play these little games with the rigged markets with the, with their little funny money or re, of, uh, re, central reserve banknotes of debt. But uh, yeah, like I said, it's just a means to control people. And um, we have cautious saving and reluctant borrowing lift bank deposits. Aussies are paying off their debts and saving. Savings grow by 12% while lending by only 4.3. Home lending market weakened considerably. And target date retirement funds in U.S. recovery 2008 losses. Morningstar says target date funds designed for investors retiring last year have recouped losses from the credit crisis. Morningstar Incorporated said... So, and uh, here we go. Spanish unemployment rate rises to more than 21% as inflation accelerates. Then Eurozone unemployment remains at 9.9% in March. Then we have best job market for U.S. graduates since 2008. That's when I graduated with a journalism degree that was voted as the worst degree to get <laughs> in an article. Um, I didn't cover it in my videos, but I read it, I read it and uh, I was just kind of laughed at it, right? Um, we're going to move on here, and it says that, uh, and of course, they don't really need real investigative uh, reporters. They just want a bunch of uh, repeaters, uh, as David Icke puts, them, puts it, uh, repeaters. They're just repeating crap that they've been told to say, and it, none of it, there's very few truth in it at all, or any facts. Most of it is just propaganda, and, um, you know, the people are, uh, gotta, they got to earn money, right? So they go and they just... They just perpetuate the whole thing, the whole system. So inflation accelerates in Europe on oil surge as business confidence wanes. And European inflation accelerates at the fastest pace in two and a half years and confidence in the economic outlook declined as surging energy prices threaten to undermine growth. And Iran inflation rate rises to 14%. Brazil to play tough on inflation, Rousseff says in speech, says that they'll play tough on inflation to defend the value of workers' salaries President Rousseff said on television radio broadcast last night that QE2's end unlikely to ease China's inflation, says economists and U.S. Treasuries. Uh, he says here, U.S. Treasury, sorry, China has decreased its holdings of U.S. debt. Mainland China has decreased its holdings of U.S. Treasury securities since last October. Yeah, they have. They've been dumping them. That's the that's the more accurate term, uh, according to a report updated today by the U.S. Treasury Department. And um, they've also started trading bilaterally with Russia. It says here with the renminbi, uh, home prices see biggest quarterly slump in 12 years. And then we have mortgage rates decline. Then five more U.S. banks are shuttered. And uh, a viewer just uh, left a comment. It was a very insightful and informative comment, which was they're not actually shutting the banks. Yeah, you see little, you know, closed up. But no, they're just... They keep the same name and they're bought out just like everything else, right? Like all of those products that if you were like me, you're an 80s child, you grew up with all these little products, right? Uh, nice little consumerists, uh, con little consumers as they put it. And, 
you know, remember all those products, they're all, they're not, if you look at them now in the back, they say what? They say the same five companies, whatever, Nestle, ConAgra, Unilever, right? They're the same four companies. So they've all been bought out over the past, what, 20, 30 years. And it's funny because talking about little consumers, when I worked at a grocery store in 2008, I was telling my manager who uh, happened to be younger than me, and I was telling them, I was like, look, dude, this is a joke because they were bringing in little children, school children with their teachers and bringing them to the grocery store. I guess this is what they do in this city. And they bring them to the grocery stores and they teach them how to shop, how to be little consumers. And I told my manager that. I was like, dude, they're brainwashing them. They're teaching them how to be little consumers. And, uh, you know, they come to the milk department and tell them how they're that toxic, pasteurized, homogenized uh, with growth hormones and steroids added to it is going to be good and healthy for them and strong for their bones. And I'm telling them, dude, you're going to lie to them if you tell them that. And he's like, he's like, I don't want to do it. I'm like, well, I'm not doing it, you know. But uh, long story short, yeah, so they go through the whole meat department and tell them, show them all the bad radiated meat and all the GMO vegetables. And, and then they teach them how to check out and swipe and use a little card. And, and then I saw something recently that just about made my jaw drop. And um, it was they have little these little carts for, um, I guess, people that are under 12, right? Little people. And uh, they're little shopping carts. But it, now they added these little poles that have these flags on them that say uh, consumer in training. And I'm not joking. When I saw that, it just made me sick. Consu consumer in training. Customer in training. So it says here are three suspects detained for fatal attack at Greek Bank and Greek police trace and apprehended three suspects. Why? For the fatal attack against the bank branch at Athens during anti-austerity protests last May, according to Greek media reports. And it says here, Buffett admits error, says Sokol events inexcusable. And then we have consults stole $3.6 million from schools. IBM and Verizon complicit in crime, says investigators. So nice New World Order Nazi companies. Uh, making out on the deal, Android phone users sue Google over alleged tracking of their movements. And it says here, and their corporations, so they won't really be liable for anything, just so you know that. It says here, U.S. tobacco firms win Missouri hospital cases. And it uh, says here, six major U.S. tobacco companies have defeated a lawsuit by hospitals. Look at this. Seeking compensation for treating patients with smoking-related illnesses. This is about as ridiculous as asking GM or suing, not asking, but G suing GM or Ford for getting in an accident. You know what I'm saying? I mean, this is just really getting out of control with smoking. That's why I said um, don't be surprised if tobacco is banned in your lifetime altogether. NFL drafts first round draws only 1.3 million uh, viewers. This is fewer viewers than 2010. Oh, okay. So it says it draws 1.3 million f fewer viewers than 2010 on ESPN. So see uh, the, the, the slaves and the plebs, which I'm included, right? Uh, they're tuning out from the distractions of the Coliseum, and they're more focused on things like getting by day-to-day. -day. GE chief resigns from New York Federal Reserve Board. Oh, look at that. Chief executive uh, of General Electric has, res has resigned from the board of the Fed of New York, citing what? Increased demands on his time. Well, what are those increased demands on his time? Oh, well, let's look at this. He was uh, in January 21st. Obama picks Jeffrey Immelt, GE CEO, to run new jobs focus panel as GE sends jobs overseas and pays little in taxes. So there you go. Twelfth five-year plan indicates China's future. What will it consist of? Quote, we will see an evolution from energy and resources consuming development to low carbon and green growth. That means low consumption. That means starvation, okay? <laughs> that means eugenics, population reduction. Need I say more? CEC warns 30 million kilowatt power shortage. So there you go. That's part of it. They're just going to scale back the power usage so people can freeze in the middle of the winter um, or not have lights, right? China expresses willingness to boost cooperation with southern Sudan and promises further aid. And, of course, that's what these smart meters are and the cap and trade. That's, what's, that's what it basically means. These companies, these big corporations, the cap and trade, all that does is get rid of their competition. They're still going to be able to pollute. And, of course, they're going to be able to regulate with these smart meters your usage of heat and electricity inside your house. So if you're freezing, you're SOL, shit out of luck. You know That is the green economy. Use less because you're a slave. So you can just get used to it, right? Please join me in part three of this news bulletin. This is GGN, and I'm Darko. Thank you.